Hey guys, and welcome back to the 8 9 Garage. Today is kind of a planning day with just a couple little small things mixed in. Before we move on in this video, shameless plug, actually it is, no it is not shame, I have no shame. Please consider subscribing down below, it is free, it will cost you nothing ever to subscribe. And also hit the like button, I'm trying to grow this channel and those are the best things you can do to help me out. We now join our regularly scheduled program already in progress. So I kind of sort of went and showed you a couple of things going on in the last video. And I did film some other things uh, afterwards that I will insert along the way as needed. Basically, we're switching over to better brakes. Basically, SN95 stuff, you know. Stuff that's all factory that you can make fit on a Fox body. Ford used it on something. All of this, you know, for the most part, Ford used on something. So I've made a list of everything that is going to happen for sure right now and a couple things that are probably... And there's a 99% positively good chance that they'll happen. Currently, we have Lincoln front rotors. SVO calipers and out back here we have Ranger drums and also Ranger axles. SVO calipers have a bigger piston so I was hoping you know it would break a lot better. I don't know probably not. So if you see the body of this piston it's quite a bit larger. Not too sure what Ford didn't just use these for they already had them made up so I don't know why they just didn't put those on these it's a good setup I will very easily be able to either put those on the 89 or sell all this because it really is a really decent setup and it is fairly easy to change to but this is what we're gonna go to because I'm worried about having Fox brakes with more motor like that. I know there's a lot of guys running around like that, but I don't like that. And they probably don't either, to be honest with you. I'm going to fix it before the 351 just so we're all ready to go. And this is what I'm doing. On the front, we're going to do SN95 spindles. I've got those over here on the side. Um, lots of this stuff is buried and I'm not going to pull it out to show you. I'll, if I have pictures or if I have video of it, I'm going to insert a little bit of that here got new rotors and pads i mean that that's a no-brainer i do have uh, probably four rotors that i can turn and use but i'm going for brand new and then i'm also going to go with the sm95 hoses just makes sense um I don't know why I put lower control arm bushings because there's only one control arm up here, but basically I'm putting new bushings in the control arms and ball joints. And then we're gonna modify these SN95 spindles to accept the new edge calipers. Uh, it's a little minor grinding that has to take place for that to happen, and I'm doing it. Uh, the advantage that you get there is dual piston calipers, whereas the SN95 are just single piston but these are made by PBR as you can see right there and these these feel lighter than the calipers for SN95s or Fox bodies but yeah this these came with the, the brackets and everything um, and then let's move on to the rear here okay the rear I went and got some of this stuff from Travis and these axles are 30 inch axles. They actually are three quarters of an inch longer than the Fox factory axles. 
So we'll have a, a stance that sits out an inch and a half total wider than factory with going with these. What that does for us puts us a little more outboard and allows us to make up for some gap, push these out a little bit. Um, and that's also going to allow us to put a little wider wheel back there. SN95 brakes, which I also got from him. Um, then I've got hoses and cables on the way for the park brakes and, and whatever. Oh, and I also have the other, there is a fitting that is different on the actual brake hard line that I got to change too. I may rebuild the differential and I didn't take video of this, so I'm actually going to do that here. This is a clutch pack kit for an 8.8. .8. I think it will work for either 31 spline or 28, but this is a, I wound up getting all these for like 50 bucks. But it's all new, steels and clutches. And anyway, I'm gonna just take a gander at them while I have it apart and we'll see if we need them. And then I'm also doing the control arms and control arm bushings. Those control arms are right there and I'm not gonna dig them out. The bushings are over there too. They are Amazon specials, but, and they're not adjustable. So that might change. And that brings me to what I'm probably going to do. And that is the torque box reinforcement kit and subframe connectors. I really want to stiffen it up back there a little bit, just make it so she won't tear out on me. And I also think I'm going to take this drive line out and go get it gone through. It has an Aerostar drive line in it right now. It, do, it does have a little little boo-boo on it from when I was putting it together. Swung the hammer just a little bit off and, you know, you know how it goes. I know it's cold, I'd like to feel sorry for you, but I'm cold too. And your family completely annoyed the crap out of me this entire summer. Landing on my lips, flying around my head, I don't feel bad for you at all. In fact, when you see that little bugger that landed on my lips on the other side, you tell him I said to piss off. I need to really winterize the 8.9. It has gas that is over a year old in it. So I need to get the gas out of there. And I also need to get the battery on the maintainer. Buckle up and uh, when I get home in, oh, I don't know, half hour or something like that, uh, probably longer, I'll start working on it a little bit. Okay, I'm home. Um, I'm gonna start out by throwing the eight nine on the maintainer. I do have, actually I have three maintainers. For a long time I was using these here, which are really actually pretty decent. I get these on Amazon for, I don't know, eight bucks, 10 bucks, something like that. They're probably 20 now though. Um, but this is the one I've been using as of late. This is a charger slash maintainer. It's only a two amp, but it gets the job done pretty well. First off, we're gonna remove the negative cable, and that will require me to get a 10 millimeter wrench. Finally got one. You don't need to undo both sides, really. Just tuck that right there. Usually I just set this thing down right in there. Okay, I'm gonna bring this cable up from underneath. So I usually pull it up through right there and wiggle it through that area. And she kicks on the charge. Okay. I'm gonna pop these two really quick. Nice and full still. I only bought this battery in like March, so anyway, 
that's uh, that's it for now. It is the next day, Tuesday now. Looks like we're still charging. That doesn't necessarily mean that it didn't hit full already though. And just uh, go back into the charging cycle. I'm gonna get my meter and just uh, have a look, see what we're sitting at on that battery. After sitting on that, it should be somewhere in the 12 to 12 and a half, 13 range, I'm guessing. All right, there we go. Let's see. I unhooked the negative, so we're not uh, measuring the charge. 13.2. All right. I'm back from AutoZone. This was cheaper at AutoZone than anywhere else, except I didn't check Walmart, but that's fine. This says it treats up to 20 gallons. I don't even know what's in there. I don't know how much is in there. So I'm gonna get a funnel kind of situated to get this in there. And I'm thinking if I put half of this in there, I'll be golden. And this is supposed to uh, keep that fuel good up to 24 months. It says to only use it with fresh fuel. We're not doing that. All right, so that's kind of what I got rigged up. We're figuring on this having 10 in it. We need to use four ounces of this. And that there measuring device. So I'm gonna have to use, uh, fill this up a few times, eight times. That job is done. And I actually believe that I'm gonna just leave this torn apart because very soon I'll be replacing all this carpet back here. That might be the next episode actually. All right, that's gonna wrap up this video. And I just wanna stop really quick and thank you for watching. And thank you for your support, your kindness. Please subscribe, it is free guys. I really want to grow the channel. More than anything else, I want to see this hobby continue on in further uh, generations because who knows where they're gonna learn it from if they don't learn it from us that are doing it right now. That's the whole reason that I started this channel was so I can help further the Fox body community and also with anybody that wants to work on their own car, save a little bit of money. Wherever I can help somebody out, I'm more than willing to help. Drop a question, whatever you have, and I'll do my best to answer it. I help guys with F-150s. I help guys that don't even own Fords or Toyotas or anything. I do whatever I can to help people out. Thank you guys so much. Peace out.